But we're talking in this seven-week course about the seven churches of the book of Revelation. We're calling it the seven. Uh, we're not doing a comprehensive study on the book of Revelation tonight, but we're doing uh, specifically the seven churches and how it can define where maybe the church world is and where we need to progress, even in our individual lives. How many of you are the church? <laughs> That's all of us. Yes, yes we are. So tonight, uh, I want to, just by way of introduction, talk about the church condition and shifting position. The church condition and the shifting position. And since this is mentoring, um, a mentoring aspect to it, I welcome you. If you have a comment or a question, just let us know. I'm like a 747, just wave me down. And even though we're on the internet and we're going to wait till we have our round table to do most of the discussion, I want you to feel free to have a comment even while we're on. Okay? Mm -hmm. yes. We all got it? Yes. So, we're talking tonight about the church condition and the shifting position in this introduction to uh, the seven churches of the book of Revelation. First, let me talk about the book of Revelation. Notice it's not called the book of mysteries. <laughs> it's called the revelation of Jesus and kingdom mysteries. So a lot of people, as you've heard apostle here talk about, have had the wrong idea of the book of Revelation, that it was all about gloom and doom and, you know, all the gargoyles. <laughs> but actually, it's a revelation of Jesus and the kingdom, how it is transitioning into the earth. So it's called the book of Revelation. The revelation uh, the Greek word, as you know, also, if you've been at Kingdom Brain very long, someone else coming in. Hey there. No, great. Welcome, welcome. Um, we have got a full class tonight. This is exciting. We've got a place for everybody. Right here. There's some space right here. And I think we could, we got another chair over here if, you, if you'd like. All right. Welcome, welcome. And we're getting quite a group online as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you online, if you could see, this is great. We've got a, a great group of people here. Uh, yes. All right. So we just started. You haven't missed anything yet. Revelation in the Greek is apocalypsis. Define... Now, this is what the revelation is defined as being laying bare concerning divine things. In other words, it is meant to reveal something to us. It's not supposed to be so right. uh, hard to understand, mm -hmm. but you have to see it from the right perspective. And number three, the focus is not on events. This is where a lot of, uh, if, you, if I may say so, a lot of those who taught on Revelation in the past had the charts and it was all about events. Mm -hmm. But it's not focused on events, but why the events take place. Mm -hmm. um, this is all an introduction to the seven churches. Mm -hmm. So it's why the events take place and how we are involved. How Number four, it's not how God or kingdom citizens are reacting to the devil. But it's how he is reacting to the culmination of God's kingdom on earth. Yes. Mm. The book of Revelation yes. could get exciting. Yes. <laughs> so that kind of defines the whole perimeter of the book of Revelation. Again, we do a whole course on that as well. But I want you to look at Revelation chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. I'm going to kind of piggyback off of the message I gave on Sunday. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet mm -hmm. saying, I am what? Alpha. Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see write in a book and send it to the seven churches, 
which are in Asia. Actual churches that are in Asia. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Those are the churches we're going to be talking about each week. And why we are... I'm not going to get ahead of myself. But as we said on Sunday, and now you've got it in your notes, Alpha is Greek, first letter of the Greek language, meaning beginning, but it also means in union to. Omega is Greek, meaning the last letter or completion. The last or the end or the result in union to Alpha. What's interesting, Hebrew, the first and the last letters are Aleph Tav. Am I saying that right, Apostle? Aleph Tav? Aleph Tav. Aleph Tav. And that is the Hebrew that means first and last. It's the first and last letter. And it speaks of the ox head or strength, or power, or leadership joined. The first and the last joined. Yoked. Wow, we could go home now and yep. say we got a lot to chew on. <laughs> How many of you believe uh, we don't have to worry about anything? Alpha and Omega has already taken care of it all. So, beginning, what's that? Yeah, amen. We're in him and he's in us. So beginning there on your sheet, I'm kind of giving you a foundation so we can get into the church aspect. Beginning uh, is defined as new first blueprint and an activated process. So the beginning didn't happen uh, just when you got saved. <laughs> but the beginning is the blueprint and the end is the result. A lot of times we hear about end times and we get scared because it's emphasis on all that the devil's doing. But really the end is the result, the and, conclusion and, and the producing of the promise. I want to say, but that's something that the, the enemy always tries to grab a hold of. Mm -hmm. Something we don't understand and try to make a big deal about it to fill us with fear. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't understand it, what we don't understand is, you know, our, our mind's not open to it. And, and that's how, that's how religion is. It's trying to keep us up here and just the ones that know are up here and they're going to explain everything mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is different. Yeah. It speaks to all of us. And it's not full of fear. That's so, that's so powerful. He says, I am Alpha and Omega. Not just I have Alpha and Omega, I am. Mm -hmm. So as you heard Sunday, I am says I am. Yeah. So then he speaks to the churches. Notice he says, I want to talk to you from the beginning and the end that happen simultaneously that are joined and show you how the church is involved in that. Then he speaks to the churches. Greek, of course, you know, is ekklesia, called out ambassadors, embassy and colonizers. OK, so we all good so far. So now I want to talk about three levels in, introdu in an introducing, <laughs> introducing this tonight. I want to talk about uh, the precept, the positioning, and the pursuit. You know, when we say the best is yet to come, we mean it. Because you're the best that's coming. <laughs> so let's start with precept. And again, wave me down if you have anything you want to ask or, or share. We start with a precept before we even get into each church from each week. Precept, this is a revelation of Jesus, not just events to his ambassadors. So he's specifically speaking to those who are going to be involved in making it happen. Not just escaping from it happening. That's us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. But I mean, making it happen. Yeah. So he says in verse three, 
Blessed is he or she that reads, knows the process of the kingdom. <laughs> Blessed is he or she mm -hmm. that hears, mm. receives the purpose of the kingdom. Mm. <laughs> when they read this writing, this revelation, they should consider themselves blessed. Mm. Yes. Is anybody blessed? Yes. yes. Then it says in the third part of this, blessed is he or she that keeps yes. or obeys the plan of the kingdom. So he says, blessed is he or she that reads, reads hears, hears, and keeps it. Hears and keeps. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 10 because he says, and I heard behind me a great voice. Because I'm skipping the verses where the churches are listed. We're going to talk about that when we get started on that next week. But he says in verse 10, I heard behind me a great voice as a what? As a trumpet. You might see there on your sheet, I did a lot of work for you. But, <laughs> but um, how many of you appreciate that? Okay, amen. But... It's important to understand when he says trumpet, he's not just talking about a classic old man with a trumpet up to his mouth. <laughs> trumpet is literally the sound of transition. That's what it meant in the, in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Whenever they had to move, mm -hmm. that was the transition was the trumpet. Mm -hmm. We're going to do something. What are we going to do? So we all have to pay attention. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's the sound of transition. It's the sound of advance. We're going somewhere. And it's the sound of a new season. So you know what the end times is doing is just presenting the beginning. Mm -hmm. The end time is actually just helping the beginning to come. The beginning that was always here, but now is being restored. So... This is why he says, I need you to understand, I'm speaking this as the Alpha and Omega. I'm not speaking this as one who's doing this as we go along. Mm -hmm. But it has already been assured. The advance is here. Are we good so far? Yes. Well, I can tell we're going to have a good round table. They're all reserving oh, it yeah, oh, yeah. for that. <laughs> so preparing. the precept had to be in place. In other words, you have to understand the book of Revelation, uh, even what he's saying to the churches in the right precept in order for the concept to make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then he speaks of positioning in a shift. Number two. We are, and I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I felt this today as I was studying. We are in that shift. Yes. Yes. You say, well, wait, no, that. this has to happen. That has to happen. This uh, I really believe we're already in the place where the Spirit's speaking to the churches. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, we're in that positioning shift. It's preparation and processing time to a new level. Wow. Has anybody sensed it in your belly? Yeah. Yes. That, yes, that even what we've understood to be church is changing? Yes. yes. Even though we've known kingdom now for a while, it, it, we're coming even into a new level. So each week now, we're going to see how God speaks to the seven churches to correct and position them as his authorized representation on the earth and how the end times events are not about escape, but transition. Culmination of God's kingdom. Wow, wow, wow. So now, you know, sometimes, you know, we can, I've, I've heard so many teachings that wasn't deep, that it was just thick. <laughs> it was so deep, I couldn't understand what the heck they were talking about. And I'm not sure that's how God operates. But Revelation 120, look there on your sheet. As for the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. Wow. Whoa. It's a mystery. Yes, Dr. Rick, it's a mystery. Somehow the stars are going to come down from the sky. 
and the seven gold lampstands are going to begin to flicker. Wait, hold on. It actually, how many of you glad he tells you what it is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the seven stars are the angels, and I put in parentheses the ministers. Ministers, yes. Of the seven yes. churches. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches right. taking their position. Seven in the Greek means, as you know, complete, right? In union to God's blueprint. So God is positioning the church not to escape, but to shake stuff up. We're the ones shaking things. Amen. And it's the devil reacting to us. And, and he's lying to us, telling us, that he's shaking us mm -hmm. with fear, with mm -hmm. whatever. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, you have no idea, but I do. And and, and that's his tactics. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should recognize it by now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this brings us to then pursuit. And this is what we're going to begin to understand as we get into the seven churches through the weeks. Is anybody excited about this? Mm -hmm. God has a pursuit in mind for each one of us. This is why all this junk that's been trying to prevent has got to be moved out of the way. Yes, amen. Because pursuit is the culminated release of the unstoppable advance of the kingdom. <clears throat> because now when you skip past this seven churches, chapter four of Revelation says a door was open and another voice of a trumpet. So I've heard this preached that's when we escape. That's when we finally leave this worrisome world. And thank God we get out of here. Well, that's not what that means. It doesn't say then suddenly the church is in heaven. A door was opened and another voice of a trumpet came. A door, I hope you get this tonight, represents a threshold. A passage to a new level. Ooh, man, I, I, can I tell you the church is about to come into a greater understanding of its authority. It's going to actually be in league with these angels and these trumpets that are sounding. In fact, we are some of the trumpets. Oh, I skipped ahead a little bit. I'm sorry. The trumpet represents the release of a going through. A coming up but not escape out. There's a difference between coming up and escaping out. I'm coming up to a new level. I'm not escaping out of trouble. In fact, I'm causing some of the trouble. Did you know you're a troublemaker? You're a troublemaker. You know, that's why I really believe when Jesus came walking on the storm, the reason why he walked on it, first of all, he was representing resurrection life before it even culminated in manifesting. But I think he caused the storm because all the elements were reacting to his ability to take authority over it. So, you know, when trouble starts happening around you, praise God. Because you're the one that's causing it. <laughs> oh, you, maybe we'll get this a little more. Sometimes I'm not coming back to class, Dr. Ray. <laughs> no, hang in there. The trumpet represents a release of going through, coming up, not escaping out, but a manifestation of the church's authorization to bring down corrupted systems. Amen. Oh, there's stuff that you're going to be able to start doing that you never dreamed you could do. This is why it says in Ephesians 3, 9, and 10, and I mentioned this Sunday, I think, as well, to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery. It's unfolding. You know what's the good news about it? The devil has no idea what's going to no. happen. He, he reads Revelation as gloom and doom for him. He's got that part right. <laughs> to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God. He didn't hide it from us because he didn't want us to know. He hid it to protect it. What he is hidden in you something he is protecting. Who created all things by the word, Jesus Christ. 
to this intent. This was his intent. That now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold mm -hmm. wisdom of God. Wow, wow, wow. So that's an introduction tonight. And uh, we're going to get into each one of the churches. I just want to say yes. about the manifold wisdom of God mm -hmm. is that none of us have the man all the manifest manifold wisdom of yeah, God. Multifaceted. Mm -hmm. That's why we should fellowship together. That's mm -hmm. why it says to assemble yourself together mm -hmm. because together we have many. Yeah manifold wisdom and, yeah. and that manifold wisdom is a, a wisdom that we can't have for just us just me just yeah. you is for 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 all these things that guys revealing to us yeah. through us also. you know that's such a good point because an example would be apostle chris and myself when we're on like kingdom conversations yeah yeah i see that you know when I you're on that. camera you can't give a look like you suddenly got a revelation unless <laughs> you understand it but he says a lot of things that hits me for the first time. And I'm like, oh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, maybe I do the same to you. Uh, and, but see, we, we have come, uh, the, the kingdom perspective is, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm learning so much from him. Yeah. Yeah. And we're yeah. learning from one another. Uh, to the that's point to where the revelation unfolds because he says, this is why I want you to assemble together. Yeah. But because we're seeking the kingdom first, yeah. all this all this is opening up in us mm -hmm. and letting us know who we really are in Christ. Yeah. Like, what do we look like? Yeah. What, what do we look like? We don't look like this. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. we're light yeah. energy and you know, the power of God in us oh, that we're we don't get recognize into light. by just by looking at each other, you know. It's it's going to be amazing uh, <laughs> as we get into these seven churches, just how each one of them, uh, he picked seven churches, actual churches mm -hmm. in Asia at the time to describe how we need to be aware of where to shape up mm -hmm. and where we're positioning to. So we hope you'll stay with us. Now we're going to sign off of Facebook. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And we're going to go to our round table. And if I can reach it. Until then, what do we say? To, to the, the king. king.